morning, good morning. How are you? It's uh, 23rd of October. <clears throat> I'm a bit creaky, croaky, but I don't know, uh, <clears throat> I don't know why. Everyone runs a mile when you cough these days. But uh, this isn't a new persistent cough, it's an intermittent cough I've had for about six months. So. Anyway, uh, off to work again. Every day, I don't think people don't realize how stressful dentistry is. And I think part of the stress is that every day you get a new, you know, some sort of new stressful situation uh, that you have to deal with and everyone is unique and, you know, you can, with experience, you can deal with them because you've seen problems of that type before, but they're still, they're still all unique because everyone's with a different patient, etc. So, um, we had to exclude someone from the practice. Nice, he's a nice lad. He's in his sort of early thirties, starting a business, uh, plumber, and um, uh, didn't turn up for an appointment. Wasted an hour. Uh, so said that he, uh, you know, he's completely unaware of it, and that as a plumber, his girlfriend or his wife makes his appointments for him, etc. And so what happened was we said, well, you know, these things happen. As we always, you know, we almost invariably do on the first visit, and then, um, uh, and then he turned up for an appointment, and then uh, he let us down again for an hour. And uh, so, and this was to have about uh, 260 pounds worth of work done. And so uh, we sent him an email saying, you know, we sort of missed you at four o'clock or three o'clock or whatever, whenever he was supposed to come in, and and sent her an invoice for 260 quid at which point he was like um he didn't go off like a perhaps a new patient might and say no oh, i'm you know come and get me copper <laughs> if you think i'm gonna pay that you know you've got another thing coming he was like no that sounds like an awful lot of um an awful lot of money you know just for a simple mistake uh people do do this you know they sort of uh, they know they've got an appointment on Tuesday and then somehow Tuesday turns into Thursday in their head and so they miss it <clears throat> anyway he wrote me this sort of email back saying how he thought that I was uh, you know being unreasonable to ch even charge him and uh, as a plumber you know he quite frequently tries to he, he doesn't charge people if they forget that he's coming and they're not in and that even, uh, you know, if he was going to pay a charge, he would never pay £260 because he'd had nothing done. <laughs> so, you know, and you're, you're on a hiding to nothing trying to explain anything to a patient like that because, um, first of all, they expect your business model to be their business model. So, for example, he's like, I, I don't charge people if they forget, therefore you shouldn't. At which point we reminded him that the first time that he had forgot, we hadn't charged him. Uh, he didn't mention what he would do, do if someone uh, booked him for a job twice and, and that didn't and wasn't there twice, you know. But I said to him, if somebody had ordered something that was, uh, you know, a, a special order, like a special bath or something or some taps that weren't returnable for 260 quid, and then and then said, no, I'm not going to pay because uh, I don't I don't want the taps anymore, and I'm not going to pay because basically you never gave them to me. You know, I say you, you want the money for that, you know, because it's irreversible. Like an appointment is irreversible. Uh, but I mean, that was lost on him because he's a plumber. I mean, you can't expect too much. Do you know what I mean? You cannot. You know, I, I'm not. What I felt like was uh, sending him a link to a Wikipedia article on opportunity cost, so that he could understand what opportunity cost is. But he's he's not. You know, we're not at that level. We're not arguing at that level. He's just basically saying that I've, you know, okay. He's he's sort of used to getting by on his charm and being a cheeky chappy and uh, and uh, everybody loving him. And he doesn't understand that we we see through that charm uh, because we we got lots of charming patients. And then they, you know, he's all like, you know, well. You know, if you lose me as a patient, then you're going to lose. I was going to recommend loads of people to you. I was going to recommend all my family. I was going to recommend all my clients. <clears throat> you know, which is, 
again, is a dumb argument to make because I don't need any more clients who don't pay, <laughs> who don't turn up and don't pay. And, you know, those sort of people I do not need any more of. So to say, oh, you're going to lose out on a load of these people that I know, it's, you know, uh, uh, people like me, people I know, people, friends of mine, etc., other plumbers, uh, he's really... Um, it's just a daft argument, you know, and it's sort of trying to, it's trying to say, well, I, I don't want to pay for my own mistake, but the the, the profit you're going to make off of all these imaginary people that I might refer that I haven't so far, uh, it will we'll make up for it. Overall, you'll make a profit, and we just don't work like that, you know. So I said to him, like, I, as I always do under the circumstances, oh, don't worry. I said I'll cancel the invoice. And then you can uh, find a dentist who doesn't mind if you don't turn up, basically. You know, who's someone who's prepared to fit in with your. Um, hello, I've got to get myself defrosted a bit. I'm fogging up. I'm so annoyed. I'm fogging up my windscreen. So, uh, yeah, so um, I cancelled the invoice and uh, told him to find another dentist. But he knows, he knows that, that a dentist who doesn't care if the patients turn up doesn't exist. There is no such thing. What he wants is a dentist who uh, is possibly running a system where he's constantly running late and is so overbooked that uh, a patient not turning up is a welcome relief, you know, or allows you to have a cup of tea or allows you to catch up. Um, we don't do that. We run on time, and if someone doesn't turn up, then the nurse and I sit there looking at each other. Well, I mean, we do paperwork and stuff like that, but there's no chance of uh, uh, replacing it with any clinical work. I've got to say, from a you know, from a legal point of view and a moral point of view and standpoint, I would say. You know, if you can fill that appointment, then you you shouldn't charge the person who's not turned up. If I could have got someone else in in the time that he he'd not turned up, then um, uh, then I wouldn't have charged him. But at less than 24 hours, that's very unlikely. And uh, when a patient just simply doesn't turn up, it's impossible, isn't it? Unless you uh, literally got someone, you know, that you can say. Uh, if I get a cancellation today, you can come in, um, which, which they don't know. So, um, yeah, so he and I are party company. So I don't, which is a shame, because, I mean, as I say, personally, he was very likeable, etc., etc. Uh, but um, uh, <clears throat> unreliable because of his life, his chaotic life. And, again, you know, I do understand the argument that, you know, patients have got chaotic lives and, uh, you know, you have to deal with them as they are and you have to try and get dental health to people who are perhaps don't have it as their highest priority or perhaps have trouble organising appointments or paying for it, etc, etc. I, I understand that. I totally sympathise with that. Um, what I don't sympathise with is patients who uh, make it quite clear by failing twice that they are they, they're treating you with some measure of disrespect you know there is some measure of um, disrespect there that they they don't think your appointment is important these the people who ring up and they say um, uh, something else has come up I'm afraid I, I'm not gonna be able to come in uh, and they uh, quite often they say um, but I don't mind paying the charge you know thinking it's five pounds or ten pounds or something when they find out it's, it's 45 quid uh, for just a checkup then they're, they're like uh, they never pay and that, to a certain extent that's fine because really to be honest with you uh, issuing an invoice for 260 quid or 45 pounds or something it's not we don't do it with the intention of getting the money um, sometimes we do get the money uh, uh, a guy uh, failed to turn up one morning he's the Tuesday Thursday guy uh, very apologetic, very apologetic, insisted on paying for the lost time straight away, he paid, paid about 40 quid or something for the, for the lost time and and he and I are going to continue to get on great because as I said to this plumber, I don't mind you not turning up as long as you pay. 
for the time. And we've had we've had some serial, we've had some famous serial non-turner uppers. We had one guy who uh, ran a telecoms company who frequently didn't turn up for his appointment. He was coming in for a route treatment and it was costing him about 400 quid every time he didn't come in. And he must have not turned up four times. And every time his secretary just rang up and said, oh, I understand Mr. So-and-so has not turned up again. He's asked me to give you a ring and, and pay his bill. And we made 1,600 quid out and <laughs> we hadn't even opened his tooth up. Uh, but uh, on the whole, uh, you know, th th then, and then there's this sort of the aggravating uh, idiot type show, no shows where a guy is, um, uh, let me just get my wing mirror going, automatic wing mirrors, uh, ring, rings up and books an appointment, and so you make him an appointment and then he doesn't turn up. So we give them 10 minutes because they might be, you know, we'll give them 10 minutes just in case they're really, really stressed and they're just about outside the door. So we don't like to ring them up when they're pulling into the car park. Uh, and uh, after 10 minutes, I ring this number, ring, 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 no, no reply. And then two minutes later, our phone rings and it's the same number. Uh, so I pick the number and I say, hello, uh, is uh, so-and-so there, Stuart there, whatever his name was. And, uh, who is this? You know, it's uh, it's Derek Watson from First Impressions Dental. Oh, oh, this this girl said, I've got the wrong number. Oh, I've got the wrong number. Thank you. <laughs> I know what happened. Yeah, I rang you. You rang back to find out because you missed the call. Who was ringing? You found out that it was the dentist that Stuart has uh, made the appointment at and not turned up at. And then you didn't know what to say, so you've you've said something stupid, like I've got the wrong number and hung up. Yeah. So uh, then you know, so we sort of we flip flop between taking deposits off of these people, not taking deposits. Then we take deposits if, if a few more fail, and then we don't take deposits, and the whole thing is completely unsatisfactory. We tend to. Um, we tend to err uh, towards not taking deposits because uh, for the genuine patients it is a bit um, uh, irksome to you know to say oh, I'd like to make an appointment oh you can see me oh you can see me that's marvellous you know oh, when, oh Wednesday right like nine o'clock okay that's fine yes oh what's my long credit card number you know I mean it does it smacks a bit of um, you know what's the uh, you know wanting wanting the money straight away up front and it smacks a little bit of um, uh, over, -enthusiastic, over enthusiastic application of capitalism but um, you, you have to sometimes you have to and then uh, some patients we've got uh, who have to pay in advance some patients you know if they fail the appointments I say some that's fine the chaotic lives theory if they've got chaotic lives again that's not a problem you know I can cope with that what you can do is I mean you can put a chaotic patient together with a chaotic dentist uh, you end up with chaotic dentistry but I mean that it happens in the NHS practices up and down the country a, a lot of the day the um, what you have to do is you have to have a buffer if you like of patients waiting for you so you can almost do it on a sort of uh, expect to be kept waiting, expect not to be seen at your appointment time, expect to be in a waiting room, which is difficult these days because you can't have any community spaces really. Uh, and, um, and the dentist will be kept busy even if someone doesn't turn up. And the way that you cope with people not turning up is, is you have a buffer, which uh, just uh, means that you can keep working even if someone doesn't turn up. Now, it so happens that Systems for Dentists, which is the software we use, has recently published a video on how to uh, handle it when a patient walks out without having any treatment. So they've got a button that, you know, the patient is attended in, the patient is in the waiting room, the patient is in the surgery, the patient has left. But uh, 
they have to, the, the case that they chose to highlight in their training video was what to do if you check the patient in the waiting room and then the, the patient says, I can't wait any longer for this, this is ridiculous. I, I, my car runs out in five minutes, there's no chance for me to get any treatment done. I'm gonna have to rebook. And so you go straight from patient in waiting room to patient departed and they did a special video on that. And that's not a good sign, is it? That is not a good sign. But in the same way as, uh, you know, when you go to somewhere to, you know, use a service, for example, like a train station, and on the, and, and the ticket sellers sitting there behind armor-plated glass, you know, <laughs> they would rebuff an AK-47, and they've got a big sign on there saying that, uh, <clears throat> any instance of violence against our staff will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law, you know? Or you go into A&E and, and <laughs> they've got signs up saying any uh, violence or assaults on staff will not be tolerated, you know? And you think, that is a business with an unhappy clientele. <laughs> this is why the Queen rides round in a car that's built out of bomb-proof armor-plated three-inch thick glass, a gorilla glass. She has an unhappy clientele. <laughs> Similarly, the Prime Minister, you know. Why, uh, when I was a boy, I used to be able to go up and stand outside number 10 Downing Street. Now you can't get anywhere near Downing Street. It's, uh, you know, it's surrounded by art. You can't park anywhere in Whitehall. You can't, you can't get anywhere near government. That is a business with an unhappy clientele. <laughs> so, what do you do? You know, do you operate that sort of surgery where everyone's uniformly unhappy? Or do you uh, operate a practice where I don't know, as Joe, Joe Sullivan would say, things are done properly, you know. Uh, grace is said before dinner, you know. Uh, everybody uh, secretly believes in God. And uh, uh, certain standards apply, you know. Everyone supports the Queen, etc. And uh, not, I mean, you know, I mean, the, um, the point I'm trying to make is that do you, uh, do you insist that certain rules are followed? Um, and that people respect each other, you know. That's all I'm asking for, a bit of disrespect, a bit of, not a bit, a bit of respect, a bit of, a bit more of disrespect, disrespect here. I, I, all that's all I'm asking for is just to be respected. The, the, the 40 years I've spent working in the profession and the five years I've spent training and the academic skills and the business skills and the mechanical and technical skills that I operate and, uh, on, on a day-to-day -day basis. And I am not going to be lectured by some plumber on how much I should charge if he decides not to turn up for the second time. You know, I'm not interested in his views on whether 260 pounds is is a lot of money to charge under those circumstances or not. The point is that in the same way, it's up to him to decide whether or not he charges his clients who don't, who aren't in when he calls, and it's up to him to set the price for fixing a leaking tap. Uh, it's up to me to set the price for um, disrespecting me uh, over multiple occasions and, uh, and not turning up. So, so that's why as soon as he went down that road, he ceased to become a chaotic person with a chaotic life. You know, for whom I had a lot of respect, building up a, a successful plumbing business by all accounts, taking on staff, uh, but, but, you know, far ahead. Um, making money, you know, making good money and, and uh, a nice guy to talk to and everything, young family. He's, he, he changed from that to just uh, an a-hole, you know. So that's fine. As I say, these invoices are not issued to be paid. They're, they're issued as, to set up a wall. They are, they are a barrier to future attendance, which the patient is required to a hurdle and we do it in the expectation that 99% of the patients will not hurdle it and it's just a nicer way of saying cheerio you know there, there are other nice ways of saying don't darken my doorstep 
an invoice tends to do it quite nicely because it's you know it still gives them the opportunity of rehabilitation doesn't it so you can you can rehabilitate yourself if you make me whole if you make you know if you restore my financial loss uh, then you, you'd still be very welcome in fact I love patients who pay me uh, to sit around and, and do nothing I wish they all did that but um, but if you're going to try that on uh, you know by waste my time then expect to pay for the pleasure uh, don't uh, so we have a large number of invoices outstanding and occasionally you get a patient who uh, rings up and says oh can I put my nana in or can I bring my son along or something and we look and we see they've got like an invoice outstanding from about three years ago and, and it just you know it just perhaps prompts us to charge them in advance for whatever they want you know because they've got a history they've got a record uh, you have to keep a record of it we keep a record of everything every interaction with the every what is it Herb Sherlock Holmes says that every interaction leaves a trace modern policing and every interaction with our patients leaves a trace and those traces are what we catch them through anyway <coughs> here we go little local yobbos waiting to go into the school all drinking large cans of Red Bull and showing how they can ride on the back wheel of their bicycle so anyway I hope things are going well for you and uh, I'll uh, if I think of anything sensible to say I'll talk to you tomorrow bye